Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to sketch a portrait in real time and watercolor paint it because I had a lot of interest after doing a time lapse the other day for Sketchbook Sunday. We're gonna start with an oval shaped and I'm working on a, um, on a piece of hot press watercolor paper, which just means it's smooth and I'm using a watercolor pencil. Now, if you don't have a watercolor pencil, I recommend that you, um, that you sketch on a scrap of paper and then you transfer it on with like some transfer paper or something. Because if you have to do a lot of erasing, it can be, um, it can damage the surface of the paper and then you won't get a really nice result when you're, when you are, um, when you're watercoloring. So how about halfway across, we're gonna put a curved line. So think about this as a globe and this is like a lot latitude um, line going around here. And then we're going to do another one that's not quite center, it's just slightly off from center. And this is kind of like a longitude line here. And that's gonna be where we line up our eyes, our nose, and our mouth, okay? And then over here, just kind of like slightly above our midpoint, we're gonna have a little mark for an ear. And we're gonna bring that out, and then we're gonna bring it in here, just above the jawbone. Okay. And now we're going to place in an eye. And I like to kind of get this stuff done with a watercolor pencil because I can make um, sharper lines over with a, with a graphite pencil afterwards. This is just gonna kind of help me place everything and make sure everything is kind of where I want it before I put any uniform lines in. The shape of the eye a little bit differently. And about an eye width apart over here. Because it is, you don't have really a lot of foreshortening going on because the head is just only slightly turned. In fact, we'd see a smidgen of ear over here as well. So if you want to carry that line over and just make a little indication of an ear, you can do that too. So it's just, it just has enough turn in the face for us to have some interesting shadow. I will link up the reference photo I'm looking at um, from Unsplash below so that you can take a look at that. And then you can go from uh, from that as well. Now I know I have a tendency to make eyes a little big, so I'm trying to be aware of that. We all have our things, and that's also a very popular look right now. Now something I find very helpful is to have something that I can prop my paper up on so I can um, look at this a little more straight on as I'm sketching. So it's a little angled for you right now, but I want to make sure that I have this accurate. Another thing I'll do is flip my paper upside down and Go that way as well and that really helps me place things okay so or even giving yourself a little time can help too the shadow on her face is really interesting um, and I really want to get that I really want to capture that so I'm gonna make a mark just about where the a little bit lower than the bottom of the ear for the bottom of the nose here and I'm just gonna kind of get those forms in there. It's not like a, a circle so much. Her nose is a little more angular, so I'm just getting some basic shapes. Got the nostril. You're going to see a little bit of the nostril in there. I'm going to cut uh, trace over with my pencil the really important lines I need to make sure I keep. So since there is a little bit of a turn here, we're not going to see as much nostril on this side, but it's just slightly less. And then we're going to have our lips right below here. And her mouth is slightly open, which I think is an interesting... Um, uh, we don't see that very often. Usually the mouth is closed. I, it's just kind of like she's very kind of pensive. She's looking over. She actually has a cigarette in her hand. I'm not going to draw that. Um, but what I really liked about the photo, because I don't have room, not that I'm making any sort of comment, um, the reason... That, uh, that I like this photo is that it has a very Victorian look to it. Um, like her hairstyle is kind of up, like done up and it just has, and she just has a very kind of classic look on her face and the lighting is really interesting. Uh, she's not really smiling, so I have to make sure I don't make her too smiley. Um, and I gotta make sure I make the mouth wide enough, because I also have a tendency of making mouths too small. I'm um, not terribly happy with this. I think the lips need to be up just a little bit. Okay, this is getting a little bit better. 
and then get a full make the bottom up a little bit fuller I think a little bit of shadow there and I think I am gonna need to give a little bit more chin here shape her chin a little bit more and she has a little bit of an angular jaw that kind of comes back here to the, into the hairline she does have a pretty high forehead but it's also the fact that her hair is pulled back and the hairstyle I think so a lot of times I'm looking around the um, the face I'm looking at the hair I'm looking at the background and I'm letting that help me uh, help me sketch here she's got a center part and she has some curls which I'll probably I will do that a little bit later so it kind of reminds me of like a um, like a school marm or something <laughs> from Anna Green Gables I don't know just very kind of old-timey and then she looks like she's got some sort of braid wrapped around her head back here and some curls the eye she's looking definitely not looking at the viewer which I think is also a different a nice uh, perspective usually a lot of times I have my people looking at the viewer confronting the viewer and she has a high collar which I think I'll, I'll do in the pencil okay so we've got a basic um, we've got a basic sketch here I'm gonna go ahead and put the collar in that does a, a nice job at dating um, your character giving your character like a, a setting a time and place we've got a brooch a brooch here I wonder if this is uh, this photographer seems to do a lot of um, portraits of women in like period dress uh, I'm gonna get my sketch lines here a little bit more defined I tend to want to open the back of the eyes a little bit more and that is not what we see happening here actually got a little bit of a crease over the eye going in towards the nose and we've got a that it continues out over here kind of where I originally drew the eye get the eyeball in there and since her eyes are not super widely open they kind of the iris touches the top and the bottom and over here we again have that crease forming fairly far in going up over actually that was crease should, should be pretty horizontal so sometimes you can catch if you have something like slightly asymmetrical now there you know honestly the faces are symmetrical symmetrical but nobody's perfect that's why when you see a reflection of yourself in the mirror and then you see yourself on camera where you're not reversed your image isn't reversed you don't think you look like yourself or you don't think you look the same or someone takes a, fi a picture of you and you're like I don't look like that it's because you're seeing you see a reflection when you look in the mirror you see an opposite you see it mirrored and when you're um, now that looks way too high to me um, and when you are looking um, when you're looking at a photograph or you're on video and you know not on your phone it hasn't been flipped or anything you look different so that's because we're not absolutely symmetrical let's see I got more of an angle up there then it goes down so it wasn't too far off but it was definitely enough off that that it was making my sketch off bring this down you can see the waterline on this eye pretty well I don't want to and see this is why I said if you are um, if you're sketching with graphite to probably work on a on a scrap of paper her eyebrows are 
They're not as bushy as the portrait I did the other day, but they're not as thin as what you typically see with like a Victorian subject. The gentle arch. And I'm just going to get some of the details on the nose there a little bit. And basically, I'm just darkening the lines I think I have correct. And not ones I'm not so sure about because those will wash away and I can refine them later on. Now, if I was doing like a serious portrait, I would definitely sketch this um, on copy paper and then I would transfer it once I had it perfectly well done. Okay, now this is going to be all shadow here, so I just want a light indication, but not a lot. Um, and I think I will just get the contour a little bit more in case that washes out when I put my first wash in. All right, I think that's really all I need to put for this, uh, this uh, starting sketch. I don't think I'll have a hard time figuring out where the hair goes. Hair's pretty, pretty easy. Drop the ear a little bit, maybe. Okay, and I'm going to start off with a round brush. This one might be a little big. I like the softness of this Neptune, but I think that one's a little big, so I am going to find something a little bit smaller. Let's do this Menta here. This is a six or an eight. What do we have? Number eight Menta. And I'm just going to wet all the skin area. Try to avoid the teeth, but I think I might have actually got some in there. Oh, that brush wasn't very clean. <laughs> I can see green in there, but that'll be fine. The paints I'm using. You can use whatever you want, obviously, but I am just using this Paul Rubin set because it's got a lot of the basic colors that probably your sets have at home, and I'm just going to be using your standard colors that we use for a lot of stuff, so there shouldn't be anything new you have to have. And if there is, then I'll tell you what substitution to make. I like to go into the hair a little bit when I am painting the skin tone because um, it gives you, you won't have a, like a white gap because there's always like little bits, like wisps in between the hair, especially when it starts off. And you want, um, you want to have a skin tone under there. You don't want it to be like paper white or it's not going to look realistic. And it's great to do this on the first go because that's going to be your lightest wash. And generally when you like part your hair, if you've ever noticed, you look in the mirror, your scalp is lighter because you have your hair protecting it from the sun. So you'll end up with, like if you can see any hair through, it's going to be lighter. So for the skin tones, what I'm going to use is, um, oh good, I don't have glare on my palette, so I don't have to, I don't have to mix on the silicone. I have a silicone mat underneath this. I'm going to start off with yellow ochre. That's generally, if I'm doing Caucasian skin, that's generally what I start with. And then I am going to add in some... Uh, for hers, I'm gonna. She's a looks. Like she's red hair, like strawberry blonde. So she's gonna have a cooler complexion. So I'm gonna go in with some alizarin crimson. You could also use rose matter, um, quin red, anything that's got a little bit of a, a cooler bluer undertone. I'll show you on the swatch. That's what it looks like right there. So these would be like your warmer skin tones. If you're painting somebody with a more um, warmer complexion, you would go with that. Cooler complexion, you'd want a, a cooler red. And I'm going to add a little bit. You can either use ultramarine blue or cobalt blue. I like ultramarine because it's a little bit easier to control. And I'm just going to kind of put this over to the side. I'm also going to get another little puddle of my yellow ochre over here. And I'm going to do a little puddle of the crimson. Now you can start off with kind of a base color to begin, but I like to have, um, I like to add some like shadows and highlights as I go. This is going to be really washy. It's not going to be very bold, but I like, I like to do this because I feel like it just gives me, um, it like saves a layer that I don't have to do later. Now you'll notice this weird texture on the paper. 
I think it's a hot press thing. I've noticed that there's not like, it looks like the paper's pilling and I wanted to use a paint different from what I used the other day because, um, because I noticed that. But I don't know what it is, if it's like a, the if it's just how the paint looks, but on hot press paper, it will look weird. Like you'll have this strange, um, this strange texture to it. But when it dries, it's perfectly flat. It's very strange. <laughs> So it's not pilling, there's nothing like coming up from the paper. It's just uh, the way the, the paint looks. And I've seen that actually in other people's speed paints. Um, and I was like, oh no, what's happening to the paper? Or is that gonna be all like mottled and rough looking? But no, it's just, um, it's just how it looks. I'm doing the yellow ochre kind of on its own in the highlight areas. Yellow ochre is such a wonderful color for mixing because um, it's not really, it's not super yellow and you can have blue next to it. It's not going to go green. It's just a very, a compl like a very, I don't want to say complementary because th that has another word in the, you know, another meaning, but it's a very um, friendly color, I guess would be a better way to say it. it. It like really works well with other colors. The other thing I like about using yellow ochre is it's a very easy to lift color. So if I decide that I've got too much in, I need to lift something out, it's really easy to do. So is ultramarine blue and cobalt blue. Um, alizarin crimson is a moderately lifting color and moderately staining. It's not going to completely lift up. That's why if you do have a warmer complexion using a cad red, you could even use a cad red light, it will lift a little bit easier. Those colors also tend to be more opaque, so it does give, and it gives you, it's warmer colors do tend to be more opaque, um, so they do lift a little bit easier. So with the mix with a little ultramarine, I'm going to go into some of the areas I know are going to be shadowed. Now I'm not going to have a harsh shadow here, so I don't want to do anything that requires I have a harsh line. And I know it looks like she's a black eye, but don't worry, it's not going to look like that once we get that shadow spread out. Now, if you have a cool complexion, the undertones in your skin are usually bluer. If you have a warm complexion, the undertones in your skin are greener. So if you're trying to pick like foundation, like if I look at my veins, my veins look more blue. If you uh, have a warmer complexion, you look at your veins, they're gonna look a little more green. So if you're um, a woman and you wear, um, like if you wear makeup, you will, you know, you'd want to look at that because that'll tell you should your foundation be a little more pink or should it be a little more orange? You know, if you have a warmer complexion, you'd have a foundation that's a little more orange. And if you're cooler complexion, you'd have a foundation that's a little bit more rosy, a little bit pinker. You know, you could have the same lightness or darkness to your skin, but if your undertones are different, you know, that's really... Uh, that really matters. So something to keep in mind. I think that women may that who wear makeup have, might have an easier time learning how to paint skin tones than men or than women that don't wear makeup just because they're used to matching and they're used to that, um, you know, finding the right color. Gives us an advantage. And you can kind of work out a lot of the form here and I really like to do that on this first layer as much as possible. Um, I do find that hot press paper, even a cotton hot press paper like I'm using here, absorbs a lot slower. So it does give you a little more time to blend and mix. Now if you want some really bright highlights, what you want to do is clean your brush off and you want to wipe it off with a paper towel. And then you can go in and you can pull off some highlights. So you pull off the highlight and you wipe off your brush, okay? This is going to dry really light, uh, so these would be like these super bright highlights. And even if you're painting somebody who was darker skinned, you would still have, if the light is bouncing, you're going to have highlights. You could have highlights that are almost white, um, even on a very dark skinned person. So look for those highlights. Paint what you see, don't paint what you think you see. I know it's, uh, if you were painting in an opaque media, you could paint everything your mid-tone and then you could go in and add highlights and shadows. Um, if you do that with watercolor, if you put everything down and you cover everything up, it's going to get muddy after a while. So that's why it's important that you lift rather than going in with a white. Now I will go in sometimes with a white gouache or a white gel pen and get those sparkles back at the end and that's fine. But I don't think you'd want to cover the whole skin like that because I think you would lose a lot of the life and vibrancy in the skin. 
Now the neck could be a little bit darker, but I'm going to wait and do those shadows, um, add those shadows on top later, because I think I have a really nice base there. Now for the, the collar, is kind of like a lace trim, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some ultramarine blue over here, and I'm thinking, I'm really thinking, what do I want to add to this painting? Because um, if I add a color here, I want it to be very versatile with, with the other things that I'm adding. I know she's going to have kind of a strawberry blonde hair, um, but it's not like, I don't really want to bring in a red, like a cadmium red, I think what I want to bring in is either an English red, which is like a, a orangey brownish red, or I want to bring in a burnt sienna. And because I find burnt sienna to be a little bit more, and I'll show you the difference here in a dried swatch, the English red's a little more opaque, and you can see in the pan there how it looks more like the color it actually is on white paper. They could tell that's an opaque color. Um, burnt sienna is a little more transparent. Um, which is going to give me a little more versatility because an opaque color will cover up what's underneath but a transparent color will let those layers show through so I think the burnt sienna is my best bet in this situation however if you don't have burnt sienna go ahead and use your English red go ahead and use whatever whatever you have um, I just wanted to kind of explain why I'm using that so if I mix those two colors together I'm going to end up with a nice gray, a nice gray because blue that that burnt sienna look at that look how orange it is right because if we were to take that brown and say what color does it look the most like not calling it brown we'd say well it's pretty much like orange so orange and blue are opposite so when you mix opposites together or complementary colors together they turn either gray or brown they neutralize one another and that's what I want to, to happen here so now that I've got this nice gray now if I look at this gray really carefully I can see that it has green undertones so what I'm going to do just to get rid of that green is add a little bit of crimson and that will negate any of that green because green and red are opposites and they will neutralize each other or complementary colors meaning opposite on the color wheel meaning they you know they complement each other they make each other look bright if you put them next to each other but they neutralize each other if you have them uh, if you mix them together I do go into color theory in my essential tools and techniques for a watercolor course if you need more information about that and I do have some color mixing videos for free on YouTube as well so um, if you want to find more information about that I will link both of those in the video description uh, so I think um, actually I was gonna go and paint my darker details and wash over them later but I think I'll actually cool that down a little bit and just do a just do a little bit of a wash because I've got that brooch, uh, brooch that I'm going to need to... I say brooch because that's what makes me... That reminds me how to spell it right. Because <laughs> when I think of the word brooch, I can't remember how to spell it. I am not a very good speller. So I need to take all of the, uh, all of the tricks that I can. And I'm going to bring this uh, the color out a little bit. Just so it doesn't look like she has a really skinny neck. Because she's going to have hair trailing over it. The other thing I like about the um, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna is how it granulates, which I don't know if I'll have enough paint in there to granulate, but I can kind of see it there. I just want to drop a little bit in here under where the hair is going to be, so maybe I can get a little of that granulation. Generally, you will see more granulation on a hot press paper. It will also tend to blossom and bloom a little bit more, so you do need to watch your puddles uh, because uh, that might not be the look you're after. Sometimes it can look all right, depending on what you're painting, but other times it can kind of ruin the effect. So now I think I can probably go into the hair a little bit. I am going to look at my highlights. My highlights will be the yellow ochre color. The base color of the hair will be more of the burnt sienna. And I can pump up that color if I need to with some crimson and I can downplay it and shadow it a little bit if I need to with some ultramarine blue. I'm gonna start with the yellow ochre and get those, um, get those highlights in. It's always easier to dull down a color than it is to brighten it back up again. You could even go over almost everything with the yellow ochre. I'm using a really soft brush. That is some sort of little brush booger I have in there. I don't want that. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Um, you can scrub at it a little bit if you see you have a harsh line from your skin tone. That would generally come from crimson being in the mix because the other colors do, um, do blend out pretty well. Gotta be careful around anything that's still wet though because it will blur. I don't know how, oh they must have done pin curls. I'm like, how did these Victorian ladies get the hair so pretty, get those pretty ringlets? But it must be probably because they did the pin curls. You pin your hair up in little buns before you go to bed at night and then when you wake up they're all nice and curly. 
This little braid back here is nice and bright or blonde. And this area here is more in shadows. So I'm going to go right ahead with the burnt sienna and get some of that color in there. Even if it does like blur and fuzz a little bit at the edge of the skin, I'm not too worried about that because then that could look a little frizzy and that would give you a little bit of that natural look. I think um, having a natural look is better than having a perfect look because it will feel believable. Don't think there are too many Victorian women uh, era women with that beautiful silky pantene, you know, hair. <laughs> If you want your, your paint to blend less, then pick it up from the pan and don't add extra water and then it's not going to be able to travel so much, but you will get more of a dry brush texture if you're going on dry paper. If you're going on wet paper, you'll get more of a, um, you'll get a sharper line than you will. It won't want to blend in. color before I go in and start mixing dark. A good rule of thumb is to, even though I, I'm picking that up and I'm not mixing with anything, it's still a good idea to work it out on your palette a little bit because it can, um, it can help you not get clumps. Sometimes you'll get like a clump of uh, a paint on your brush and that can be very frustrating because then when you bring it on your paper you end up with this big glob of paint and then you're trying to spread it out and you have way more pigment than you expected. Uh, and that can happen with, um, especially if you're not used to artist grade paints and you're using artist grade coming from a student grade, you can end up with, because you might have to dig to get the amount of pigment you want from a student grade paint and you're using artist grade paint and you get way more and then you're left with more pigment on your paper and it becomes really problematic. And now I just want to kind of get a little bit of the detail and on this braid back here, I'm not going to want this to be really detailed because it's further away, but it is kind of a pretty feature. And it does really set the tone of this, um, of this painting. I'm gonna spread that out a little bit. She got her, in the reference photo, you can see the cuff, her lace cuff kind of coming over here because she's holding a cigarette, but I'm just gonna go ahead and bring these locks down. Okay. Actually, um, the hand holding a cigarette probably would be very interesting to draw, but probably not for a beginner hour-long tutorial. <laughs> that might be a bit uh, a bit advanced. I would draw, and if, with hands, I would definitely draw them on scrap paper first because I am not uh, I'm not that I don't draw that many hands. I would need I need a little extra practice. I hit her jaw a little bit too square, so I'm gonna use this darker color to um, shave it down a little bit. And I'm also going to bring the shadow into the neck here. I know it seems like it's really dark, but it's not. It's not too dark. It just looks dark because I'm putting it in this early. I know a lot of people like to slowly work up to their darks, but I strongly advise getting your darks in early because it makes you more brave um, through the rest of the painting process and then you save time because you don't fuss around and you don't overwork your painting because you're not spending a lot of time wondering if you're doing it right you're just get, you're just getting down to business and also if you're gonna mess it up by putting darks in you wouldn't you rather mess it up at the beginning before you've put in like lots and lots of, of hours right so, you know, that's why, you know, fail fast, fail, if you're going to fail, fail fast and take risks so you grow. You're, you'll learn more from failing at something than you will from doing it perfectly, I'll tell you that. I like that wisp, I like that long. The, the shadow is on this side of the face. So the hair is going to be darker on this side. This Paul Rubens paint is uh, fairly affordable for an artist grade paint. I would kind of put it 
Um, actually, it reminds me quite a bit of, of the Windsor & Newton, but I would kind of put it in between the Windsor & Newton Comet and the Windsor & Newton Professional. But the feeling of it, at first it reminded me an awful lot of, of Schmincke, but um, the more I work with it, the more it reminds me of the Windsor & Newton. I don't know. I'm thinking there is an ox gall in this. I think I read there's no ox gall. Um, but it doesn't, it reminds me more of Windsor Newton than of, uh, now that I've been painting with it more, um, than the Schmincke. I think the Schmincke is more vibrant, higher pigmentation. But for 24 colors for 38 bucks, I think it's well priced. I don't think I'm going to end up seeing much of the ear on mine. I think I made her cheek a little, a little too full. And you have a fuller cheek on somebody, it makes them look a little younger. Yeah, this one, this this uh, lady looks more looks more like a girl than a woman now because of the because of the roundness of the cheek. I'm really glad I didn't give her a cigarette now. Okay, now I'm going to touch the face with the palm of my hand, or the back of my hand rather. Still feels a little cool, so I don't really want to do, um, I don't want to layer on top of it until it's completely dry. So I'm going to grab my heat tool and dry this up for a second. At least the face part, I don't really need to get the hair, but I need the face to be dry if I'm going to go on with another layer. Okay, that well, looks to be dry enough. Now I'm going to um, draw in her teeth, and really what we're just seeing is kind of the line between her two front teeth, and she's got pretty big teeth here, so that also will make her look young. Just I'm just barely suggesting it. And I also want to lift out the uh, watercolor pencil I have in there. So I'm just going to use a small brush and I'm just going to go over it lightly and lift it out. And then I'm going to press in there and that's going to lighten up the teeth quite a bit. Now I think I want just a smidgen of this uh, blue-gray that we mixed. I'm going to add that right, under, right underneath the lips just to get a little shadow because you don't want to have bright white chiclets uh, poking out there. You, don't, you want a little shadow. Okay, so now I can work on, um, I really want to get the shadow in there because it's really strong on the nose. I'm gonna go, I think this brush might be still a little big to do that because I'll end up with a lot of pigment. So I think I'll drop down to a, some, uh, size six this is a number six Royal Espresso, which is a, um, it is a synthetic, but it behaves a lot like a Kalinsky. Like a Kalinsky Sable has a little bit more snap than like the uh, faux squirrel brushes or a real squirrel brush. I'm going to use some burnt sienna and some, uh, and some ultramarine blue. I'm going to mix it in that first skin tone mix which was yellow ochre and um, ultramarine blue and crimson. A little bit more blue in there. So it still has some reddish undertones in there because I don't want it to look like completely grayed out. And I'm going to look at my strongest shadow here and the strongest shadow is above this eye and it's also on the side of the nose. So again, I'm going to go in first with my strongest shadow. get that painted. And this really helps you get the form because the way the shadow is going to fall on the different objects on the face is going to help define them. And this part probably takes a little more concentration than other um, than other parts just because you've got, you, you kind of want to get this right the first time. And 
luckily these colors are pretty liftable because I will want to do a little blending. So blot my brush. Actually, I think I'll go back to that softer one that's more like a squirrel that's also synthetic and just kind of blend these colors out a little bit. Well, that one's not stiff enough to move the color. You could wet the paper uh, first, but I wanted to really control some of these edges. You've got this little highlight, bit of highlight on the edge of the cheek that I want to preserve, like over here by the jaw. And this shadow is going to wrap around onto the chin. It's kind of following the areas we, we shadowed in the first layer. I do not like the streakiness that I have right there. That's kind of bothering me, but it's just the second layer. I'm not too worried about it. And this is all pretty shadowed up here. I feel like I lost a lot of smoothness right here, so that, that is kind of that is kind of a bummer, but I'm I, I'm not too worried about it because I haven't put on any other any other layers, so I think it'll be fine. I think that a hot press paper is a little less forgiving as far as uh as shadowing and blending. Because you're on like this smooth surface, it's just like painting a smooth wall. Um Although I guess a smooth wall would be pretty, you know, painting something glossy, I guess, on a smooth wall, you know, you'd see, you just see every flaw. And having a, a smooth paper is kind of like working on a glossy surface. You just see, you just see everything. And I'm going to bring the shadow in here. Yeah, I think you just need to blend a little bit quicker when you're working on um, on hot press paper. Okay, and I do want a little bit of shadow just underneath the collar there. Okay, and on the other eye, I'm going to go ahead and get the shadows in there as well. But this eye is more lit up, so you don't have as much. Now something you can do if something just seems like this just seems like a mess right there. So I'm going to look for a scrubber brush. I think I have a couple in here. And if not, I've got something that will work. Oh, here we go. i got a small one. work. I would probably have picked a, a larger one, but this one here is going to be fine. Get fresh water. Make sure there's nothing on the brush. And I'm just going to go in and scrub in these areas where I'm seeing this line that I don't like. And these, this is a Menta scrubber. I also like a Maxine's mop, but this is um, like a filbert brush. It's got rounded, uh, the tips of the brush is, is rounded, if you can see that. And their brushes are a little short and stubby, so they're just firm enough to scrub the paint a little bit. So, honestly, you might just want to pre-wet the area where you plan on putting the shadow. I usually don't like to because it pushes the uh, pigment to the edge and gives you a hard line, but that's, I'm going to end up with that anyway, so... With all the scrubbing. And then while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and get kind of that blush color in there because um, I might as well do that wet into wet while it's still wet. And I'm just going to use a crimson. Oh, that's way too bright on its own. I'm going to water it down. I'm going to put it 
like in the middle of the cheek where I'm seeing more of that. I'm going to add some yellow ochre to that. And I'm going to spread it around. Bring it up to the hairline too. It'll need a little bit more pink. This is such a strong color though, you really want to water that down. I'm just looking at my reference and seeing if I can add it elsewhere. Warm up the shadows a little bit there. And I'm going to do a little bit on the other side, but you don't see as much on the other side. You also see a little bit more on the forehead, though, so I do want to get that. And then some over here. Watercolor portraits go through a major hot mess stage. <laughs> And you just got to push through it because it will get better. I'm also going to get the lips here at this point. I think I will switch to a smaller brush. And this is pretty watery, so it might be a little difficult to control. If that's the case, just blot your brush. I like to get the um, the base color on the lips, like get a basic skin color over everything in my initial wash, and then as I layer on the colors for the lips, I think it looks a little bit more natural. And I think we ought to give her some eye color here pretty soon, because she's looking a little scary. She's looking like she's a vampire or something. I'm going to mix um, the ultramarine blue and the yellow ochre, but I think I'll do it. I think I'll put the ultramarine blue down first and then drip the yellow ochre into the eyes. She's got kind of like a blue-gray eye color. I'm gonna go right over the pupil and I'll put the white back in as a, as a highlight with a pen. Or you can dig it out with a razor blade if you don't want to use white. Ooh, that's not less creepy, is it? That's still pretty creepy. Her eyes are super light, though, so I kind of don't want to add some vibrant color in there. I think all we'll do is lift at this point. blue in this one. Sorry for mumbling. I noticed there was mumbling there. Okay, let's get some eyebrows going and switch to a smaller brush. We can use the hair color, the hair shadow color, because your eyebrows are generally a little bit darker. And get the blue in there so we don't have it oranging up on us because our eyebrows are not very orangey. And I try to paint eyebrows kind of in little wisps so you don't end up with one solid uh, eyebrow. A little bit more of the brown because it's looking a little kind of green there to me. And we'll go over here. I 
I'm going to put this up on a little bit of an angle. Keep my hand out of the way so you can see. All right, now I have this uh, small brush out and that fairly dark color on it. I'm actually going to make some lip shadow color here. So if you keep working from the same colors you've been working with, you'll generally have um, you'll generally have a really natural look, especially painting something natural like a person. I think people get into trouble when you start using convenience colors, like starting off with like a like a flesh tint, or um, in, instead of mixing your own because then you end up with all these different pigments that you might not be sure what you have and it can get really kind of confusing and things can start to look discordant. I'm going to go into the mouth a little bit with this. Kind of paint around the teeth. Oh, she's starting to look a little less scary now. We're making progress. There, she's looking a little bit, a little bit better. And I want some shadow here on the side of the mouth because we've got the shadow side here. And actually the reference photo is darker than this so, you know, it's as your paint dries and the color shifts out a little bit lighter, things start to look a little bit better. Um, that's my what I usually tell people when they're doing portraits or skin tone is just to, just to not fuss with it. Put your color down and leave it alone because when it dries, something magical happens. It just gets a little bit less scary and a little bit more natural looking. Here I am putting in some of the um, uh, kind of the folds that you would see like in the lip skin just kind of like, not folds, like more like texture I guess I would say. Your top lip is generally darker than your bottom lip because it tips down And I, would I tend to go like kind of painting this detail where it almost looks like she's got chapped lips because once you paint over, you know, some more washes, you're going to lose that, some of that texture and then it's going to look really natural. I feel like I don't quite have that lip line low enough here, but I also don't want it really sharp. So I'm just kind of uh, scrubbing in a little bit of color. And then I'm just gonna I'm gonna blend it a little bit in both directions. I hope this isn't very tedious. I always find it's fun to watch speed paints of of uh, portraits. Um, they take a while, and I have no idea if people are gonna watch this. <laughs> I hope they do because um, a lot of people asked for it. All right, now I'm gonna go around the rims of the eyes, a little bit darker blue, just the ultramarine blue on its own. Because the rims are a little bit darker. And get a little bit of shadow up here on the top of the eye. And now I'm going to mix up a uh, really dark color. I'm going to take the um, ultramarine blue. I'm going to grab a little bit of crimson. Actually, take it right from the pan so it's nice and thick. Take some burnt sienna. There's definitely, I do find there's definitely a limit on the Paul Rubens paints like as to how dark when you're mixing it gets, I mean, I could use a black or a sepia, but um, 
but I tend to try try to avoid that if I can. So, I mean, sometimes I'll go back in with like a black colored pencil or I'll do some like mixed media, but I find that unless I'm using it, starting in the beginning using it, it can get a little too um, overpowering. And it can kind of almost look, um, make everything look a little gray and dull. I think it's because bl maybe blacks tend to be a little bit more opaque as well, and that can just kind of make other things seem more dull. That's, you know, and this will be a little bit later as it dries. So try to equal out the pupils. And then while I've got that color, I'm just going to add a little bit of my mix there, my neutral mix. So that's really red. i got to add some more ultramarine to that. I'm using a number two round, by the way. And I tried to, like, pick up colors from my palette for a couple of reasons, like to use it up, and then also it's just harmo uh, like harmonious. It's harmo harmonizes. Oh my gosh. I'm getting, I can tell I'm getting in the zone because I'm having a hard time talking. Uh, it harmonizes everything, so things tend to just look more natural. Put that crease in there. I'm tapping on the lashes. I'm getting kind of the edge of the eyeball itself, defining that, and just kind of tapping on that lash line. And you can leave a gap between the eyeball and the lash line because if you're going to show the waterline on there, you'll just need a little bit of space. You can use a smaller brush in this as well. I just, uh, I rarely go smaller than, um, then a two for details, but I'm not a real, you know, detail painter, and you might be, so do whatever you want to do. Don't, don't think you have to use exactly the same brush I'm using, you know, use what co is comfortable for you to use. And I'm just flicking in some eyelashes while I'm at it. can't really see the detail on the reference photo for the eyelashes too much and they're not like you know big false eyelashes they're very natural looking and I'm also going to take a little of this color and even add some to the rim okay I'm going to grab a little washed out blue here from my palette I'm going to add a little bit of that into the eyeball area, the whites of the eye, because they're never really pure white. There's always some color in there. And I'm going to grab a little bit of, I'll clean my brush, I'm going to grab a little bit of the red and add it into the tear ducts. And I think I'll take a little yellow ochre and add it onto the waterline. That would be the part if you were a teenager in the 80s where you put your eye your eyeliner. Remember that? Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to go back to the lips. And I am going to grab that scrubber brush again. Because I want to soften the top lip line. So you just want this kind of damp, and I'm just going to go along the top lip line and soften that a little bit. So it doesn't look like she has lipstick on so much as it does, it just looks natural. And a little bit on the bottom lip line too. Okay, now I'm feeling like I, the shadows weren't quite dark enough, and I'm going to do a little bit more with them. Uh, going to go back to the number eight round. And I'm just going to mix up. I just want to make sure I have plenty of 
kind of neutral color here. So I've got a little bit of everything in this mix. I would say the undertone is honestly a little violet in there. I'm going to start up here where I have a dark shadow. I'm going to add in my shadow color, rinse off my brush, blot it, and spread it. And this will help me from getting any really harsh lines. Pick up the color. I'm going to add it here where there's that really strong shadow. Clean off my brush. And spread it around. Soften the edge. Go here on the edge of the nose. This is probably really what I should have done in that first layer, but I was a little timid. Or I was putting, actually, I was putting too much. Blot it and spread it. And like under the nose. I don't really need to spread that because that's not too much space, but I do want to connect that shadow. And we're going to go under the chin and at the bottom of the chin. I don't feel like I have the chin very symmetrical. I'm going to try to fix that here. And now spread it. And then under the chin, I'm going to go ahead and get a nice shadow in there too. And soften the edge. And we get a little shadow over here on the other side of the nose. And there we go. I think I could use a little bit up here. And then spread it around. I feel like the Paul Rubens paints stain a little bit more than other paints that I've used um, that are similar, that are like these colors and other brands. I don't know if it's a hot press paper or if it's the Paul Rubens paints. I'm definitely feeling more staining here. And I'm going to do the least detail here. I'm just going to suggest I'm not really going to do, you know, too much. Just kind of get a suggestion in there. I'm just going to dab over that with a little bit of water. Yeah, this definitely seemed to stain a little bit more. I'm not sure if it's paper or paint, though. And I also feel like I want a little bit of a... Uh, I feel like I want a little bit of red in there. Maybe even a little bit of yellow ochre. Just reflecting. And then that little jewel that she's wearing, I think I'll just try to go in and... Because it's like an opal or a pearl or something. Just try to get a little bit of color in there so I won't have to do much to that later. Okay, I'm going to lay this flat here. And I'm not really 
really that thrilled with it. I think I need to, I think I'm going to go in with, let's get my highlights in there. I'm going to go in with a gel pen. I think maybe once I get my highlights, it's going to clear things up a little bit. Let's try here. I think we might need to go into the mixed media. I know some people will complain about it, but this is not how I want it to go. And I'm going to highlight here on the top of the lips. Oh yeah, see this is helping already, just have that little bit of opaque media. Bring up a little depth of color, especially with such bright highlights in the piece. And I think I'll probably grab in some yellow pencil, uh, uh, color pencil rather, in a sec, in a second. I'm gonna. Th through some of this on the cheekbone. Basically just hitting all those super bright highlights because I felt like I just didn't have enough range. I think I got a little too dark on my first wash. And it takes a lot longer to uh, do it all in watercolor than and save a lot of time if you um, jump into some other medias. I'm grabbing some blue slate and add that to the eyes. And I'm leaving my colors out as I use them because it will help. Um, it'll help me not grab the wrong color. I'm gonna grab some white. And this white does have seem to have like a cool undertone. I'm just going to go in and because it's not perfectly opaque, I'm going to go in and add some brightness here and there. Because I'll still be able to see the watercolor underneath and I think that'll give me the result that I'm looking for. This would be a cast reflection um, probably some of it could be coming from another light source or some of it could be reflecting off of her blouse. Oh, the neck definitely needs to be a little pinker. I think I'll do that with a watercolor though. You just don't want to go over the, um, what, you know, when, when it's wet, you just don't want to go over that with with your paint. And I can go, actually, I can go over color pencil a bit. It's not going to cover perfectly, but it will, I can warm up the complexion like that a little bit. Oh, that's too bright. Put that right off. Sometimes just having another media you can dip into like that can really help. God, I'm talking like William Shatner today. I don't know why. Probably because I'm trying to think and work it out and everything all, in one, all at once. This probably isn't the best thing for a beginner tutorial. I, I struggle so much. It's like quick and easy does better on YouTube, but then some people ask for more um, specific stuff and more in-depth stuff, and I can't get it done in like under an hour, and then people won't watch it if it's too long. So it's like, oh, I try to reserve that stuff for... For classes because people on YouTube don't want to watch it. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. If nobody watches it, I'll know.
I like to go back and forth. I think it's really fun to do that in art media and just play with what you want to play with. I think sometimes we can be so rigid that we lose the joy. I know I enjoy it the most when I say, hmm, I wonder what would happen if I tried this. And that's where I generally find that I like the work more too. A little bit of uh, ultramarine blue here on the bottom of this nose. We're really watered down and also in this shadow. I think I'm going to grab some colored pencil for the hair, actually. I think that would work out really well, especially since I've added some in already. Let's see how this bronze does. I don't think you need, you don't need to have a metallic pencil, but I just think the tone is out right for what I want here. Think about how the hair would go make your lines go that way. I love the immediacy of pencil. I love how this side of the neck and the hair just kind of like disappear into one another. I want the hair to go back that way a little bit too. Even though that's not how it is in the photo, I think that would look better with the way I have it cropped. And I'll add some more paint in there later. I like Prismacolors, um, personally. I think it's because I like to lay down lots of color. But if you don't like Prismacolors, use whatever kind you like. Everybody's got their own um, their own preferences. And there certainly is plenty of choice out there. So you certainly can use whatever you, you please. You'll find something that's just right for you. Now this side of the hair here, uh, this side of the part is going to be darker because it's away from the light. Light's coming in from over here, but this bump of hair is shadowing this. And then the highlight is getting caught on that bump of hair. So that's why this ends up having a shadow on it. Oh, I like that. I like the contrast. Contrast is something we need. And I find sometimes either, either it's hard to be brave enough in watercolor to get that contrast or you try to lay down the colors, you know, certain paints try to lay down the color and or the, the colors that you chose. Um, and instead of it allowing you to glaze, it wants to lift up what's underneath and then you don't get the color that you want. Ooh, I like that. I'm get some of that in the mouth as well. And shadow on the bottom of the top lip. There's a subtlety that I am not getting on this lip and it's kind of bugging me because it's such a pretty, it's such a pretty, just restful gesture that she has on her face and I am not, I'm not getting it, which is really aggravating me. <laughs> Do you ever have days like that? You're just like, Argh. this is not what I want to put down here. Give her the program, pencils. Get with the program, me. Uh, I feel like the teeth might, getting, might be getting a little too prominent. I might need to do a little wash on them. I'm going to sharpen my pencil. I usually keep a little sandpaper because that's handy to have. This brown is called Dark Brown Prismacolor kind of like a burnt umber color. I'm finding it to work really well with most of the features here, so if you're looking for something like that, you can go in and add those lashes. And the thing that I like about this is if I do want to go over with some splashy color, um, it's not going to disturb these lines. Even It might even cover over some of them, 
but it's not going to dilute them or make them go away. So as long as I'm confident with where my lines are that I'm doing with this, I'm not going to have an issue with them washing away on me. The only thing I have to think about when I am using stuff like this is that the more media I start to add, the more cartoony the piece can become. And not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but it really wasn't what I was setting out to do. But it is kind of going in that direction right now. But art's a journey. You don't always end up where you think you're going. Also, on the hot press paper, I find the colored pencil, um, because there's not as much tooth for it to grab onto, I feel like you have a little bit of a, of a safety net there. You're not, it's not going to grab so much that you can't control it. You're going to have a little bit of, um, you're going to have a little bit of restraint, just it, restraint because of the medium. I just love this wing here. Don't want to lose that. I'm going to grab some more burnt sienna. Get a nice curl going back there. And I can also go in and add to anything that I want. It's not going to resist as much as like say a wax crayon or anything like that. And I guess if you don't like the mixed media aspect of it, you could stop watching, you know, when that comes about. The nice thing about having some like color underneath is it's really easy to highlight when you go in and you want to go over with pencil and whatnot. I want to add a little bit more to the lips with a watercolor, I think. It may be a little bit more to the eyes. Even the whites of the eyes, I feel like they're just too white. I feel like the teeth are a little too white as well. That's a little better. I'm going to dry this and when we come back, we'll put on any finishing deta details that we need. I need the bottom lip to be a little fuller and that would help me with the teeth problem that I'm having and what I'm going to do is just scrub up some of this just kind of scrub it make it higher so the mouth is fuller and then I don't have so much teeth showing and then when I add some colored pencil or something to that I can totally reconstruct that area And we'll let that dry and we'll work on some other parts of the face. I've got this um, pinky peach color. It's called Deco Peach. I'm not sure if that color is still available, but it's a little bit darker and pinker than the lightest shadow, lightest highlight that I have. But I feel like it's a really nice uh, color for her skin, for her undertones. And I can soften some of those highlights over there. I can give a little bit more to the nose. And a little bit on the chin. And I can also use that on the lips a little bit. Um, I'm also going to, I think I want like kind of a creamy white instead of just like a bright white because I feel like that bright white is just a little too cool. Look at that in the shadows. That's a little, that looks really yellow though, now that I have it in there. I 
but I can go over with the white and mellow it out a little bit. I like to use a pencil extender. I always seem to go through the whites um, in Prismacolors the most often. So these little pencil extenders are really great for getting a little bit extra life out of those pencils that you use a lot. Oh yeah, let's get a little bit of that cream there on the highlight on the right nostril. Actually, any place on the shadow side where we have a little bit of a cast highlight, the cream is really good. Is this cream or ivory? It's cream. That's really good for over here. Because it's translucent enough that it just tones down the shadow a little bit. Okay, now let's look at these lips again and let's bring up the bottom lip a little bit. There we go. That looks much better. She doesn't look like she has crazy teeth and her expression is looking a little bit more natural, just like I was going for originally. Well, this kind of goes back to the getting a really good drawing before you start painting, you know, rather than just diving in on your good watercolor paper. But that's okay, this was fun. This was fun to do. It might have been a really tedious and boring to watch. If so, I apologize. There's a little gear at the bottom of the player that you can use to um, speed things up. Anytime you want to watch a video tutorial but it's just too dang long, I understand. I'm not offended. Speed me up. I sound like a deranged chipmunk, but it'll get the job done quicker. I like these these shocks of red. This color is called mahogany red. Um, this is actually a really nice color for this, and I'm gonna get some of that in the hair too because I think it just really nice spark of color. I guess I could ask you guys on Instagram before I post this if you guys want this fast or sped up. like the, the way that red looks next to that blue. I think I'm going to get a little bit in the in the eyebrow color. Not the eyebrow color, but the shadow, the eye oh, eyelid shadow. I like that a lot. That's much better. Now I'm going to this peachy pink color. This De Deco Peach. Is that what it's called? And we're going to add a little fullness to the bottom lip by just adding a shadow in the middle of it. I mean a highlight in the middle of it rather. And we'll do a highlight in the top ridge of the upper lip. She's a little smilier than the um, original picture. That's all right. I'll take it. I'll take it not looking deranged. And then I'm going through with a white pencil here just to give any um, highlights that aren't as, you know, bright that need a gel pen. Just a little, a little highlight on the ear. There's quite a highlight right here. A little highlight here. Really big highlight over the brow bone on this side. And the highlight in there. Oh, I kind of thinned out her face a little bit too much over there. She still looks really young though. Bring back a little bit of the angle on the cheek. And pretty strong highlight here on the chin. 
not much on the neck, not much of a highlight there. And we could brighten up the teeth a smidgen. There. Okay, for the eyes, I did grab this color here. It's a kind of a, it's called blue, oh, it's periwinkle. <laughs> I was looking at the French. I'm actually going to go into the pupils a little bit because I felt like I had the pupils a little too big and it was looking a little weird. So I'm going to go in there. Uh, I'm going to grab a little bit darker of a blue. I did not intend to go so much into the mixed media realm, but I don't know. I, I really want to, you know, if I feel the urge, I don't want to just worry about messing up a painting and not do it. You know, I just want to just want to do it anyway and see how it goes. I think I'm going to use some indigo. That's a color I like to use a lot in place of black. When I can find it, where'd that go? There we go. That one needs a little extender. That's a little stubby. That's another color I use a lot. I like the indigo because um, it's softer than black. You can mix it with terracotta and get some really beautiful rich deep colors. There, I like that. Look at the life that, that eye has versus that eye. I think that's um, that makes a big difference. I'm gonna flip it upside down. Just try to even stuff out. I feel like I have this eye a little big, but I think if I put a waterline on that eye with a gel pen, it will help it. So we'll close the eye a little bit, and then I can go in with a little brown and bring it, bring the lash line up a little bit. And it looks a little weird because that eye, the iris is filling that area and we have big white of the eye there and I think that's why it's looking like that side's a little bigger. And I'm going to take a little indigo and add it into the mouth. I just think black would be a little strong on this portrait because um, the skin is so fair. Sometimes I'll pull in black and it's no big deal. Can you see that if I leave it like that? Okay. I just want to add a few eyelashes. Just a little bit of shadow in the mouth there with the indigo. I'm going to do some in the hair. Because that, that will be a nice natural shadow to the orangey. The orangey hair. Because the blue and the orange are opposites. And for a highlight on the hair, I think I'll use some of the cream for the brightest highlights. I'm pressing pretty firmly, so that's why I've kind of got my hand over it. And maybe some kind of uh, sienna color for a mid-tone. These are kind of neat. These are the, the, uh, the Spectrum pencils, Spectrum Noir pencils. They're half, they've got like a highlight and a blend and a shadow color in each pencil. They're meant more for like card makers, but... They'll work. They'll work in this this uh, 
situation. I didn't see a Prismacolor that was the right color for me. Right off the bat. These are a little bit drier and firmer than Prismacolors. Good news is they are less prone to breaking. The bad news is they're not as soft. And that brooch, um, I think I'm going to do that with paint. I was thinking that I would just use a pencil and make it easy, but I don't think I want that. I think that would stand out too much if I used a pencil. So I'll just make myself up a little kind of pewtery gray color and just kind of paint in a little design very loosely and quickly because it's not the focus. They certainly didn't start with um, that planned out of a sketch. Like if I was going to do anything super realistic, you definitely want to do your sketch ahead of time and then transfer it onto your paper. And then you'd be spending a lot more time on it, obviously more than what people would stand to watch on YouTube. Just want to give the hint. You wouldn't want to have anything super detailed anyway if you've got other things a little bit looser. And I'll go over one last time, final highlights with the gel pen. I think I will give the eye a little bit more sparkle. A little bit of highlight right there on the nose. I feel like I need to scribble this off. I feel like I got wax on it. Sometimes it happens, you color over a color pencil and you end up getting a little bit of the wax. You can actually even use a little bit of the white gouache or white watercolor and give like a really translucent highlight in the areas that would be really pretty. I'm dabbing on the highlight on the bottom lip and then I'm just gonna drag it with my finger because I notice if I try to do those like lines, the highlight lines, it looks it can look really um, unnatural. I think I want to try some of that. Oh, there's no white in the set anyway. Never mind. I think I'm going to call this done. Uh, if you have any questions, you can let me know in the comments below. I say I'm going to leave it done, but I'm thinking I want a little bit of yellow in the hair. You can let me know in the comments below. I'll try to help you if I can. If this was just way too long and you are not interested in any long tutorials, you can let me know that too. It just help me decide what to post on YouTube and what to use elsewhere. Um, there you have it. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. Thanks for watching. And until next time, happy crafting.